I dread looking at mirrors now. I can't bear the thought of even looking at my own reflection anymore. Now, there's nothing wrong with the way that I look when it comes to my reflection. I've looked the same as I did before this particular incident. A couple of lines around my eyes that I could have done without. A little gray in hair at the temples. But it isn't my face looking back at me anymore. There's something wrong. A stranger looks back with my face, like a marionette with my features. It moves when I want it to move. I smile and it smiles. I frown, it frowns. But this isn't me. My shrink cannot explain this fear. My wife can't explain it, but I can. I know exactly when everything changed. I've never told them about the incident in the elevator, and I don't think I actually ever will. Not after what happened to our daughter. Have you ever had that one day that you can remember with absolute clarity? The one that you can pause, rewind in your mind like a DVD? Well, this is mine. This was a month ago. I had a meeting, a last minute type of thing. We started at 5 p.m. on a Friday. The building was one of those behemoths of glass and steel that peppered the skyline in the late 2000s. It was late when I was done. My colleagues shuffled papers across the table and back into leather briefcases. Our counterparts were across a long table, sharing a whispered conversation about the next steps and strategies. Jessica and Brian, two of my colleagues, left first. It was a Friday night, and their friends were probably already getting the first drinks of the evening. I remember smiling at their youthful energy as they left the room. The snap of the clasps of my own briefcase followed, and my fingers settled into familiar grooves in the dark leather. I paid a visit to the washroom before I left. It was already dark outside, and the office was pretty empty. Half the lights were off to save power, the maze of cubicles basked in a fluorescent twilight. The only sounds on the floor came from the meeting room, and even those receded into the distance as I walked to the elevators, leaving me with only the sound of the rasp of the vents for company. Some disturbed interior designer had fitted mirrors on all four walls of the elevator. Who the hell does that? When I was riding up with a full cabin, it felt like being in a sea of people. A slightly nauseating feeling, to be honest. Riding the elevator down alone, 14 floors, was a wholly different experience. I stared into the eyes of a row of reflections stretching back into infinity. The feeling really disoriented me, and I felt my knees wobble as a wave of vertigo overcame me. I tore my gaze away and focused on the slow countdown as the elevator approached the ground. A single drop of sweat made it down my brow. I loosened my shirt collar, chastising myself for the irrationality of my reaction just as the elevator jerked to a stop. The sudden stop made my knees buckle and I stumbled from one wall to another for one maddening moment as the lights in the elevator flickered and went out completely. The last image seared into my mind was an army of reflections of myself swaying and staggering, or not all of them. I swear that amongst the hundreds of figures I saw in the half-light that one was standing absolutely still. The small space echoed with a harsh rasp of my own breathing and the pounding of my heartbeat filled my ears. I fumbled through my pocket, looking through my phone. I held it in front of me. My thumb was poised, white-knuckled, above the power button. I couldn't bring myself to summon the ounces of pressure it would take to light the elevator up, for fear of what this light might reveal. Just as the mirrors converted the tiny elevator into a vast pane, the darkness stretched those few minutes into an eternity, I jumped as the intercom crackled to life. Uh, sir, we seem to have lost power in the building for a while. We haven't got someone down, but they're on their way to the power room now. 
We'll be back online in no time. My voice was very loud in the tiny space. Deafening, even. Just let us out, please. Okay. We got it, I think. Something must have tripped the power. The guard said, after a brief pause. There was a hiss of escaping air as the lift door opened into the pitch darkness of another office floor. The lights in the elevator winked back on. After I blinked the harsh light from my eyes, I found myself face to face with myself terrified, reflected over and over again. Except for one thing. There was a gap in the row of reflections. One of them was missing. One more thing haunted me as the lift made its way to the ground floor, and I left the building, the cold sweat drying on my skin as I sped through the car park with the windows down. This is what bothers me. All the time I was in the elevator, I hadn't said a single word. Not one.